All right, before we move into the first topic of the day, let me answer that question that we just got. What do you think about a full board breaker approach since many decks will be highly resistant to hand traps? See, we talked about this briefly yesterday. In weird ways, I am both optimistic and pessimistic about this topic, right? Because yesterday I said, well, if Fiendsmith Snake Eyes is basically non-hand trappable, doesn't that mean that we're going to go into a board breaker format? Which, in theory, a board breaker format, in my opinion, would be more fun than a Snake Eye hand trap format. I don't know if you agree with that or not. It still wouldn't necessarily be a good format, maybe. But I always enjoyed board breaker snake eye variants more than hand trap snake eye variants, right? You know what the problem is? The Fiendsmith cards also make it really, really hard to board break the snake eye deck. You know what the result of that is? Uh, it's a bad format. This dynamic is not new to Yu-Gi-Oh. This dynamic is basically what decks like Goki have created in the past or Spiral. The tier zero formats that were regarded to as not very good simply because like the player going first, their deck was just so strong. Sometimes you would throw hand traps at it. Sometimes it would work. At least Goki was really weak to certain hand traps like Droll and Lockbird. But the historically combo decks that are resilient to hand traps and board breakers because they hand loop or set up other forms of omni negates or whatever are pretty bad formats and i think that is unfortunately the most likely outcome for snake eye fiendsmith just to clarify maybe you're asking why is the deck good against board breakers from my first impression the deck now has omni negates again in some ways it's not really an omni negate in other ways it's even better than an omni negate because it's kind of got that hot red dragon abyss effect right where you can target a face up card on the field and negate it even up to two right because if the link two is equipped to it you get to target two cards and negate them even something like dark ruler no more is something that Fiendsmith snake eye can negate right because all they need to do is chain a spell or trap effect to it and then they can chain the Fiendsmith omni negate to their own spell or trap and and then select the dark ruler and negate it so in some ways it can even be better than an omni negate because you can't do that with baron for example you can't negate dark ruler with baron ever in some ways that card is even better than baron which is a card that was negated a couple months ago and uh, for good reason the situation is honestly looking pretty grim in terms of mirror matches with fiendsmith snake eye in a lot of ways it feels very similar to something like playing a gookie mirror uh, i said gookie again sorry goki where the player going first is just so much more likely to win and then even if you get to resolve a board breaker against the deck there still is promethean princess in the graveyard potential ip mascarena in the spell and trap zone it's looking like a tier zero format and here's my problem with that not every tier zero format is bad but this upcoming one has all the signs of a bad tier zero format it has all the signs of a not very interactive mirror match because the player going first is just so much more likely to win to me it feels like the kind of deck that is just unstoppable i think this is why people are more inclined to look at cards like droll and lockbird again because historically if a deck just has too many extenders these one-on-one -on -one hand traps are just not that great cards like imperm Baylor, ash blossom and stuff they don't seem great great to me in theory against that deck because very simply there's too many possible cards that your opponent can have that make those cards completely irrelevant like let's say your opponent normal summons snake eye ash and you imperm it that at the moment already feels risky because you know there's like three wanted three diabell star three bonfire that they can have to extend maybe even a one for one or they can just have cross out to negate your infinite impermanence right so like in theory you know when you activate that impermanence there is Currently like 12 cards that punish it, maybe 13 if they play one for one. Post Infinite Forbidden, that number goes up to like 16, 17, depending on how many cross outs they play, what exactly the Fiendsmith engine is going to look like, right? Not a great situation to be throwing hand traps at your opponent if they have this many cards that simply deal with it, right? The problem is I don't know how good Droll and Lockbird really is, because if you really think about it, Droll and Lockbird doesn't really get that much better against the core snake eye package right if they start with the normal summon of ash though however i will say if they start with bonfire or like fiendsmith engine or whatever then the droll and lockbird looks a lot stronger so it's it's okay let me phrase it this way i think you have a better chance at stopping your opponent from making a crazy end board with a droll and lockbird now than with one or two of those single use hand traps like imperm veiler ash like if you draw imperm veiler i think the chance that you're actually stopping them is is lower than if you just had like a droll and lockbird plus a board breaker 
Droll is pretty bad versus some other decks. Yeah, I guess that's a decision that you need to make whether you want your main deck to be good against Snake Eye Fiendsmith. The answer is probably yeah, it's probably worth it to main deck something for Fiendsmith Snake Eye, but you could obviously also make the decision of siding it. In formats like these, it's not too uncommon to simply say, screw it if i lose the dice roll against fiendsmith snake eye i'm just gonna lose game one it doesn't feel great when it happens but sometimes it's the right thing to do sometimes there are certain problems in a format that if you were to try and fix them you're making your deck way too bad in most other scenarios sometimes you just gotta accept that your deck cannot win every single game of Yu-Gi-Oh, right like sometimes there are certain things that are too hard to do and i honestly think maybe going second into fiendsmith snake eye game one is one of those things that uh you can really do it's not gonna feel great but that deck is just gonna win going first most of the time unless your deck can play stuff like shifter and such which i think is one of the main selling points of something like ritual beast we've talked about this before like ritual beast in its core is not better than other rogue decks but the fact that you got shifter in there gives you a realistic win condition when you go second against uh fiendsmith snake guy right i might go for a sprite deck with shifter yeah similar situation i don't even know if mole chummy is gonna do that much to the fiendsmith Smith Snake Eye, right? Because you drop more Chummy on them, they give you one draw for the normal summon, they give you one draw for the Poplar, and then it's if they have Diabell Star, it's another one. It's kind of crazy. The Fiendsmith cards just ignore that card, right? It doesn't do anything really. I mean, okay, I will say to that, I think if the card does the following thing, one draw always two draws sometimes, or like relatively often because of normal summon plus poplar, and then a third draw occasionally if they are forced to go for princess i think in that scenario the card is still good right because one card that draws you two or three cards going second is pretty good the only issue is that it takes up space in your deck right it could be a different side deck card but i still think Molchami is okay especially if you're playing a deck that can draw meaningful cards with it right if you're drawing like board breakers and such i think the card is fine honestly the other reason why i i don't want to talk about it too much is simply because this is all theory for me at the moment i kid you not i have not tested as much for the european championship i've only been theorizing so i don't actually know i need to put these ideas into practice before i give you guys my opinion on a lot of these cards from the infinite forbidden right and so just to make sure that the information i give you is as as good as possible basically i need i need some more time to to test in the format and i just simply haven't been that motivated to do that because we're running low on time until the european championship happens i guess we're gonna have to start soon with that so it's gonna happen